Lucas, how do you paint shadows? Lucas, how do you blend colors? Lucas, what brush do you use? Guys, chill, I'm gonna answer you. Today, I am super excited because I am going to show you how I paint a character from start to finish in only seven steps. What's up guys, Lucas here, I'm a concept artist and illustrator working for video games and this channel is all about art and art related content so if that's something that you like, consider subscribing. When I saw the new features in Procreate 5X, chromatic aberration, bloom effect, glitch, halftone, I thought, this sounds like the list of effects of the Spider-Verse movie. So because I was a very big fan of that movie and I love the effects that they had in there and also because I am hyped about the new game coming out for PS5, the Spider-Man one, I decided to paint Miles Morales for this character painting. So let's get to it. Step one is getting the mood with some music. Too bad that I cannot play the whole song for you guys. I don't want to get copyright striked. But don't worry, I'm gonna pick something really nice for you. Okay, so now for the real step number one, references. The first thing before starting any painting is getting yourself some references. I have talked about it in other videos, but it is super important and I'm going to say it again. Before making contact with your paper or iPad or whatever you're gonna use, Google that thing that you're about to paint. It doesn't matter what it is, paper, snow, a ghost. If you paint only what you have in your mind, you're going to be using the information that you already have inside of your brain. Every time that you use references, you are inserting new information in there. So don't get lazy and just put some references next to you. Once I found some images that I liked, I found a new reference companion in Procreate 5X, super useful because I could have my references inside of my same canvas without having to divide my iPad screen into. Now I am ready to sketch. Let's go to step number two. When I started the painting, I had the idea of making this full illustration. I wanted to put Miles jumping upside down in a super dynamic pose, shooting a spider web. But then I realized that I didn't have time. I wanted to finish this painting in just one single day, so I scrapped those ideas and I decided to draw only Miles. Step number three. It is time to make some clean lines. This step is optional. If you're going to leave the lines in your painting, then better you do them with some care. But if you're gonna delete them, then don't stress too much about them. Sometimes a refined sketch is enough to hold the painting together. You know, I get a lot of questions on what brushes do I use, and I, I, a lot of them. And even though I plan to release a whole pack of brushes, hopefully very soon, most of my painting, this one and other ones, were done with my favorite brush, the LP Magic Chalk. <laughs> and because I'm cool like that, and I love you guys for leaving a like in the video and leaving me comments and stuff like that, there is a link down in the description for you to download my favorite brush completely for free. Okay, so let's get back to the video. The lines are almost done and I decided to paint to draw Miles with a PlayStation 5 controller. I just thought that it, it could be fun, the idea of imagining him, Miles Morales, playing his own game in the PS5. Let's go to step number four and that is unfortunately one of the most boring parts of the whole painting, that is the masking. So while the masking is happening there in the background, I will tell you just a couple of tips maybe that will help you make this process easier. And hey, there is not much to talk about it, you know, it's just filling up shapes. But either way, maybe these are some things that will make your process a bit faster. The first thing is that going through the whole thing, like around the whole thing and then filling it from the inside is way faster than trying to go and fill the whole thing of, like with it with your brush believe me it is way faster so give that a try 
And another thing is that here the colors don't matter. I see a lot of people that maybe struggle to, to choose the right color to do the mask and then they are all confused about which part is the mask that they did. So remember that here it really doesn't matter. Choose any color that is just different enough for you to differentiate the part that you're doing and go with it. For some things like the hoodie and the shorts, I make two masks, one depending on what is the part that is, for example, above the body and one that is behind the body. So yeah, that also facilitates my, my painting process later. So maybe you can also try that. So once the whole masking is done, then it comes the most rewarding part of the process that is when you get to put the actual color of the thing in your masks and suddenly it looks great. So. Here, again, it was very useful to have the reference companion there on the left because I could just sample the colors whenever I didn't know exactly like what was the color of his shorts or hoodie or something like that. Okay, let's go to step number five. Here we are done with the masks finally. Step five is to finally start the actual painting. Wait, but Lucas, is this the only workflow that you use? No, definitely not. I have other videos talking about the workflows that I use while painting characters or portraits either in Photoshop or Procreate or any software and you can check them up, uh, I think up here in my left, yeah. I'll leave you a link right there for you guys to check different workflows and things like that. In this specific case, I'm using a workflow that I call masking and probably you know why I call it masking. <laughs> It has to be for sure my favorite workflow. It gives you super, super clean results and you can stay organized if you want to do any changes in your painting. Very important, before you just launch yourself and start painting random things, pause. Take a moment, look at the painting and think, what is the light that is illuminating my character? I have seen so many paintings that make this mistake I, and I did it all the time. So I'm trying to save your ass for things that I did also when I was learning how to paint. If you start painting without thinking where the light is coming from or what the color of that light is, you will end up with a mess. I promise. So in this case, I decided to make my life simple. I chose a diffuse cool light coming from above, kind of what you see on a cloudy day. That is why you see that the mask, for example, gets lighter and bluer the higher you go. I continue doing this for all the layers that I made in the masking. Remember that in this step, you also paint the occlusion shadows. That is just a fancy name for the shadows that happen when two surfaces touch each other, like under the hoodie uh, or and between the neck and the, and the jacket or below the chin and the neck. Okay, so if your painting is looking 3D, volumetric, like you can feel and read the volumes of your character moving in space, then you're in a good spot to add the details that you didn't add before. Things like the spiderweb texture on his mask and on his gloves and also the wrinkles on his coat and pants. Step six, time to add some shines. I love this part of the painting. Once you have all your volumes working nicely, it is time to think about materials. Characters that are done with the same material have a nice quality to them. They look like they made, they were made out of Play-Doh or something. But I love to add some shines to my characters. A bit of material difference can make your characters pop. So I decided that the pants and the jacket were going to be slightly shiny. And of course the belt buckle and the zipper were going to be reflective. So I put some sharp whites on the corners of the material to give it the feeling that it was looking directly at the light. So our painting is looking good, but we're missing the last push. And this is the step that will make your painting stand out. Step seven is post-production. Let's start by adding a couple of graphics. I was a big fan of the visual effects in the Spider-Verse movie. So the first thing that I wanted to add was a Spidey sense coming out of the PS5 controller. I just thought, it would be cool. Second, I wanted Miles to have a red and blue light around him, so I'm going to teach you how to add a super cool and super easy ring light in your characters. You will want to duplicate your whole character, paint it blue or whatever the color you want your light to be. Set that layer to color dodge and then put a mask on it. Where you want to have the light painted white and where you don't want to have the light painted black. It's super easy to do and it gives really nice results. I did this step two more times, one with a red light from the front and another one with a magenta from the Spidey Sense. Last but very important, I had to give it a try to some of those juicy filters of Procreate 5X. I put a little bit of bloom, also some halftone in the shadows and a glitch effect to make it look like 
the Spider-Verse movie. And there you go, that was painting Miles Morales in Procreate 5X. I hope that you like the painting, enjoy some of the shots of how it turned out. That's it for me guys, thank you very much for watching this video till the end, leave me a like if it was useful and of course subscribe for more content like this, I'll see you guys on the next video.